Good afternoon, Fighting Irish fans. I know I can see all of you over there watching from afar. If you want to come in this direction, we got plenty of seats. Um, it's really a thrill to be here with Derek Mays. And I understand that uh, this is uh, the second engagement that you've had. I've already had people texting me and reporting that the thing that you did over at Mendoza was a smashing success today. Well, we would try to bring that energy back over here, Dolly, for the Alumni Association. It's always a pleasure to be here on campus, back at home with family. Um, and uh, what a better way to start off uh, September right here in Notre Dame. You know, um, it's, a, it's a privilege to interview Derek, and, and I've got all of his stats here, and I'm going to say that he earned four monograms as a standout wide receiver, 44 games, 129 receptions, 2,512 yards, 22 touchdowns, on and on and on. And I do believe, as in his rookie year, won a Super Bowl, right? Super Bowl with the Green Bay Packers. Go Pack. Go, yeah. And so, but, but when I look at Derek Mays, because I happen to be just a little bit older than him, what I think about is what an incredible guy he is, what a true Notre Dame man he is, and how every time I turn around, someone talks about Derek Mays giving back, taking care of others, doing the right thing. And so I just want to tell you that I want to talk about football, but I also just want to talk about you. Oh, Dolly, thank you so much. I learned a lot here. I know I'm a living, breathing representative of, of Notre Dame and all the things that we were taught here. Um, and a lot of them are just life lessons and doing the right thing and uh, being right and being stand up and upright for others. So this is a really big weekend, right? The first ever HB um, see you and the campus just alive with excitement about it. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, it's truly a historical weekend. My mom and my dad, they both went to HBCUs uh, down at Lane College in Tennessee. And so I think it's appropriate. And uh, as you said earlier, I was able to sit on a panel with Coach Eddie George, uh, Tennessee State head coach, talk about leadership and diversity along with Coach Niall Ivey. And um, it truly is a historic event. Uh, I'm so glad that, to be a part of it. Um, and uh, I think uh, when we look uh, years down the road, we'll see that uh, Notre Dame was once again pioneering, doing the right thing with the right people. Yeah, and I love how they've uh, embraced this concept all across campus, including, I'm sure you heard that tomorrow, Notre Dame is going to give up their coveted position on the field at halftime to allow the Tennessee State Band to take the first um, part That's of right. that. Give right? It give, give it up. It up. That's yep. pretty awesome. And I can't wait. I cannot wait to hear that band play. Uh, and, and it, again, just the exposure, right, uh, to the Notre Dame community. Uh, but I think vice versa uh, for, the, for the Tennessee State fans to see uh, our hospitality and how we do it up here in South Bend and the inclusion and the celebration that we have. That's great. Um, so we're going to come back to the game itself, but let's, let's look back at, at you um, you played, you, you were from Indianapolis, you played at North Central High School. Um, what did you know? I mean, Notre Dame's just a stone's throw away. Did you know much about Notre Dame? Did yeah, you think I, about it? I, I knew about Notre Dame. Uh, uh, I, I, unfortunately, growing up in Indianapolis, you hear about IU and Purdue more so. And uh, when the recruiting process took place, I got a lot of flack for not considering IU and, or, or Purdue. Uh, they didn't consider Notre Dame a state, uh, an, an Indiana state school. Uh, but I figured that must mean I'm doing something right. And I realized that Notre Dame was a global, on a global stage uh, with global connections uh, right here in the heart of Indiana. And uh, I took a lot of pride in knowing that I could still be an Indiana kid uh, representing the state of Indiana while playing at Notre Dame and getting an amazing education here. Your mom and dad must have been so excited to have you so close to home. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, you know, the, the, the recruiting process was, it was ten, uh, long and strenuous and uh, came down to about five schools. Uh, four of them, uh, three of them were in the Big Ten and Notre Dame and Miami. And my mom was a 30-year principal at Christmas Addicts in Indianapolis. And uh, there's no way she was going to let me go down to Miami. Uh, so she's, Smart woman. Yeah, she sent my, me and my, my dad and my brother. And she said, don't worry, I'm not going to make the trip because you're not going there anyway. Just have a good time. Um, and so that made my decision a lot easier to come here to Notre Dame. Uh, it aligned with all the values and everything that I, I grew up learning back in Indianapolis. So it was just a very easy uh, transition uh, two hours north. And they came to a game or two? 
They came to a game or two. Uh, they never missed a home or away game for four straight years. That was that was pretty cool, pretty pivotal. And uh, you know, we got the chance to really uh, get, uh, my, particularly my freshman year, uh, my mom and my dad, and Jerome Bettis' mom and and uh, Jerome's dad. Um, they all got really close and tight. And uh, my brother and Jerome's brother were the same age, and so. It was just an amazing experience, and uh, it was really cool to see. And a lot of our teammates, they all sort of embraced uh, our parents uh, on the road, um, just really understood what, what family was all about. And uh, I certainly didn't take for granted all the sacrifices that my parents were making. It was, it was pretty, pretty incredible. Never missed a home or away game yeah. in four years. Pretty cool. How about that? Go ahead, Mom and Dad. Yeah. Okay, you know, everyone who ever was recruited by and played for Lou Holtz has a Lou Holtz story. Yeah. And I know that you're still involved with Coach through the foundation. Tell us your Lou Holtz story. Uh, I, I don't know if they're uh, the ones that I have are prepared for broadcast. I don't know if they're broadcast worthy. Uh, I will say Coach Holtz always said that uh, he said, Derek May should have been a kicker. He kicked everything around. What time was curfew? What time was dinner? What were we having for dinner? Could we stay over in the city for another night? So I, apparently I should have been a kicker. I'm glad you weren't. I'm glad I wasn't either. Um, do you still keep in touch with him? I do. I do. As you mentioned, uh, uh, the, you know, the Holtz Heroes Foundation, uh, uh, I was fortunate enough to help start up about uh, 13 years ago now. And... Uh, we have an endowed scholarship here at the university uh, for uh, current students in need um, and uh, catastrophic, fund, catastrophic fund for uh, the, uh, families of players who uh, have gone on and passed. And uh, as we're getting older, you know, those kind of events are happening more and more. So we're trying to be very uh, sensitive and, and supportive uh, any way we can. And, Again, those are just the life lessons that we learned from Coach Holtz while we were here during those four years, and they've carried us through the 40 years uh, ever since. You also do a fair amount of volunteer work, service-related work as part of that foundation, right? Yeah, we sure do. And, uh, you know, I think it's important when you think about the 300 some odd guys that play for Coach Holtz during those 10 years at Notre Dame, we're scattered throughout the country. And uh, we feel like we could be effective and, and of service that way. We all are leaders in our relative communities, uh, and being able to bring the same values that the foundations represents and the, and the infrastructure and the support for some of our various charities, I think that's where the power is, the power in the numbers and the strength in the numbers. So um, during that time, your, uh, your Notre Dame career had some really big moments in, in uh, Irish football history. The 93 game of the century against Florida State, a couple of Cotton Bowl victories, an Orange Bowl appearance, as you look back at those years at Notre Dame, is there anything that just really jumps out as, that's my memory? Well, I think my, yeah, I have a lot of memories. Uh, I, I, I don't have them all left, but I have a few. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I, I think there was a constant uh, theme for the memories that I had. And it's always been with the team. It's always been about the teammates, and it's always been about the guys, and, you know, sometimes it's on the bus ride home or the plane ride home um, or just in the locker room, the camaraderie that we had. You know, um, sure, there was the Snow Bowl. I don't think you mentioned that. That was against Penn State my freshman year. I was at that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was a, that was a big game. And um, as a freshman, for me, I, uh, I feel like I earned my stripes that day. Um, it was a tough, hard-fought game. And um, I remember Coach putting me in at some really crucial moments of the game. Um, and uh, I know I converted a big third and, third and long uh, that uh, continued the, uh, the drive that allowed us to go in and score and win. And um, to have the respect from our older guys, Reggie Brooks and Jerome Bettis and Rick Meyer, um, to have the respect from those guys that I was able to earn my stripes and contribute, I think that was one of my more memorable uh, uh, moments and games just because of that. That's great. Um, you were named captain your senior year. And uh, not something I think that you took lightly. That was, that was, a, that was a time of, of really, what did that mean to you? Yeah, well, you know, I was determining uh, whether I was going to come back for my senior year uh, or if I was going to go pro as a junior. And I sat and talked to Coach Holtz about it at, a long, uh, uh, at length. Uh, I sat and talked to 
Jerome Bettis, who ended up leaving a year early. I sat and talked to Rocket Ishmael, who left a year early, just to get their feedback and understanding. And um, in the end, the big takeaway for me was I just wanted to finish what I started. And uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to come back for my senior year. Uh, I wanted to be a captain. And, uh, you know, we talk about sitting on people's shoulders and people paving the way. And I think about uh, Tom Gatewood. Uh, you know, I broke his record. It was 30-year-old record, but people don't rem remember or maybe recall, but Tom Gatewood was the first black Notre Dame football captain. And so when I think about being able to fill his shoes in that respect versus breaking his record, that was far more uh, uh, Im uh, important to me. That's, that's incredible. And you, you finished your career with a school record of 2,512 receiving yards. That's not true. It's not? No, they didn't count bowl games back then. Uh, so they didn't count any of my stats for uh, the Cotton Bowls or the Orange Bowl or the Fiesta Bowl. Um, but they did start counting them about 15 years ago. So all the kids who broke my records, there's an asterisk by it. I'm just saying. I, I'm 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 really glad to know that because I'll never say it again. Perfect. Good. Now we're now. So if we had counted those, yeah, and we should have. I'd still be on top. Yeah. And so what what would that number be? Do you know? Uh, I, go, well, go ahead and add four more touchdowns. Let's just start well, there. Now we're at 26. So now we're sitting on 26. So that puts me back at the top there. Add another two, three hundred yards, and that probably puts me back on top in that category as well. And probably another dozen passes, but. Who's counting? Uh, not, not that anybody's counting. Not me. And I love this. It says, but they stood for about 11 years before Jeff Samarja came along. Yes, but yes. Jeff, Jeff with an asterisk. With, I'm just going to say, but he's got an asterisk. Like, yes. It doesn't matter, right? Yeah, and he wouldn't play baseball anyhow, so I, I tell him that. All. I, I was responsible for, for telling him to go play baseball instead of football, so he thanks me for that. He got a guaranteed contract. He still has all his faculties. He's healthy as an ox. And, and so, have you asked for anything in return? No, you don't do that. That's what, you know, we pay it forward. That was how I pay it forward to, to, to the future. Well, I love that, that, uh, that they added the question here, but now, now I know better. What do you think your numbers might look like in one of today's offenses? Yeah. They'd still look pretty darn good. It would work. It would work, considering, you know, back then we play a uh, coach host through the ball uh, 15 times a game. And uh, one of the biggest issues, he always said, he said, only three things can happen when you throw the ball, and two of them are bad. So that's why he wouldn't throw it much. Um, and other than a catch, you know, you're going to drop it or there's going to be interception. So, so I, I, love, I love all the, uh, the Coach Holtz-isms, and that, that would be one of them. Got a couple more that he used to say? Oh, my God. Again, I'm not sure if they're fit for broadcast, some of them. You know, uh, I stole his golf cart one time, um, and uh, I, I redecorated it. I put some uh, bling on it big Mercedes emblem on the front end and uh, that that broke the that broke the ice for a tough practice um, I was all, I was oftentimes just you know committing a lot of practical jokes just to keep him loose and uh, I, I, I really believe that's why we have the relationship we have today uh, just a lifelong relationship because um, it was genuine and um, we really uh, I think we really just bought into each other's philosophy that's that's really great um, you have some really great friends that, that have, have stuck with you all these years. I'm seeing Paul Berrettini out here, yeah. who you guys are, uh, are, are, are business pals, friends. How did you get to know Paul, just a, a, a fixture around well, South Bend? Well, you talk about classmates in the Notre Dame way. And uh, Paul and I were classmates, uh, 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 graduates, it's a 96 class. And uh, Paul is our, our class uh, vice president. And uh, I told the story earlier today. Paul was the, one of the only people in 1995 to have a laptop on campus. And um, during that time, Paul uh, created and developed www.nd.edu right in the basement of uh, La Fortune. And so those were some, some pretty uh, advanced, technological advancing times that I feel like I had an influence in. Um, and uh, neither one of us made any money off of it. You guys have, but both have entrepreneurial spirits that play themselves out in so many different ways. Um, you're, you're, tell us what you're doing now. Yeah, well, you know, I'm fortunate enough to, uh, uh, to get back here uh, at least four times a year because I'm a, a member of the uh, uh, director of the uh, monogram board, and uh, that's been really fulfilling all the former student athletes who uh, uh, went to school here at Notre Dame. I think we're over 3,000 members strong, and um, I'm really 
I'm really, really honored just to be able to give back in that capacity, uh, to be a dignitary for the university the athletics. Um, just down the road, I happen to be a board member for Patrick Industries, which is a big manufacturing company, uh, $5 billion strong, and uh, 60 companies throughout the United States. And I've been on that board for about four years now, so I get to get back about four times a year uh, for that. Um, and uh, I'm also an investor, um, run an investment fund, and uh, it's just really been a treat. You know, I've been an entrepreneur pretty much all my life. Um, it's hard to call yourself a business, but, you know, when you're signing a contract with your name on it and nothing else, I guess you are the business. And uh, so to go from the pros into the business world and continue to try to chart our your course, it takes, uh, you know, it takes a lot of uh, bravery in the uncertain world, but it also takes a uh, partnership. And, you know, that's what I was able to find in my, my good buddy, Paul. And we've been able to partner up and, and, and forge ahead uh, in a really awesome and successful fashion. That's, that's really great. Um, so I think about, you know, how many times Notre Dame asks you to do something. And you're always quick to say yes. And, and no matter how much Notre Dame asks of you, will you be on the monogram board? Will you do this? Will you sit on this? Will you speak at this? You always say yes. Yeah. And, and uh, no, uh, people talk about it here. What drives you to yes first? Well, yeah, it, it's a labor of love. This is service. You know, we, we learn service leadership here. We, we, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a part of our DNA at Notre Dame to give back and, and to be of service. Um, part of the Catholic tradition, and so um, it's in me. And what I know um, is that the students here, the student body, um, they embrace it just like you know Paul and I did when we were classmates here. Um, uh, to be able to enjoy um, the alums that uh, you know support us and know that it's on us and the earnest is on us to then give back and pay it forward when it's our turn. So. Oh, I'm not doing anything different than, than, than you have done, Dolly, down through the years. You know, always being of service. And let me give you your flowers as you have continued to lead this awesome alumni board for all these years. Give her a round of applause, Aww, everyone. Dolly you. Duffy. Thank you. Pretty awesome. I learned from the best. Thank you. Well, I think we're going to have time for a few questions. What do you think? Not all at once. Yes, we're going right to win here. tomorrow. Yeah, Talk I'll about figure. tomorrow. Talk about tomorrow against Tennessee State. Yes. Uh, uh, there's going to be two teams out there. One of them's going to be Notre Dame. The other one's going to be Tennessee State. Uh, Notre Dame's going to win. I uh, purposely brought uh, Coach Eddie out here for the panel that we did earlier this afternoon at the Mendoza School of Business. Uh, I was at Eddie's golf tournament um, about two or three months ago, and I said, Eddie, I'm not going to let you come all the way out here just to get whooped up on. Let's create some programming. Let's make sure you get some mileage out of it. And so that's what we were able to do. And so, you know, I've, I've buttered him up. I've got him feeling good. He's really excited to be here on campus, all the pageantry. And then we'll just go and do the, do the work we need to do tomorrow and, and uh, end on a great note, great home opener uh, to get ready for our, our, our amazing, amazing fall season. So, so while we get geared up for the next question, I, I, was, I was thinking back to 2012 when we were in Ireland, yeah. and I remember turning to uh, someone in the athletic department um, from uh, Navy after the game, and I said, tell me what just happened. And I said, because, you know, we won handily, and I said, mm -hmm. is Notre Dame really good this year, or did Navy have a tough game? And he said, I don't know, but time will tell. Mm. Um, he was, he was, because uh, he, he, he really meant that. Yeah. And now it happened again. Yeah. And so is Notre Dame really good? Yes, both can be true. You know, Notre Dame can, is really good and time will tell. You know, um, there's always two teams out there that got to play. And on any given Sunday, any team can lose if they're not prepared. So, um, you know, Notre Dame is really good. And, and time is going to tell. Um, you know, uh, how we were able to take all that talent and, and, and put it in a bottle and, and bottle it up and maintain it throughout the course of a football season. I think that's really the challenge. Um, you're, you're splitting hairs when you're talking about, you know, some of the best all-time teams and some of, the, some of them just had bad luck, you know, and, and had a, a real tough opponent at the wrong time of the season. 
And everyone knows that Notre Dame, you lose one game, you're out of the playoffs, right? So we can't afford uh, to, 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 you know, let too much slip through. Uh, and that's just going to be, a, 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 I think, a, a, a barometer of, of, of how we do. That's, that time is going to tell based on how we've been able to respond and prepare. And so as you, as you look at the game from last Saturday, yeah. what, what made you think twice? What made you perk up? What made you wonder? <sighs> the, just the execution. Everything was so sharp. Um, you know, it did not seem like a, uh, a first game season uh, style of play. Uh, they looked like they've been there before. Uh, of course, our quarterback, Sam Hartman, has been there before uh, a few lifetimes. And uh, I think that's a, just an amazing steady and force, exactly what the offense needed, um, exactly what the young wide receivers needed. <coughs> and uh, I think everyone's kind of... Uh, been given their sea legs, no pun intended, by coming over the pond, going over the pond and coming back safely uh, and, and healthy, most importantly, too, because I think that all those variables take, you know, they, they do play a, a huge part in uh, getting off to a good start in the football season. Do we have any more questions? Oh, right here. Hi. Hey, Derek. Um, there's been a lot of excitement around Coach Freeman around yes. the program and what he's kind of brought. You played for a very dynamic head coach. What, as an alum, as a former player, has been kind of your interactions and, and response to Coach Freeman? Well, I've been able to um, get close, uh, very close to Coach Freeman in, the, in, the, in a very short period of time. Um, we've got the right person at the helm. Um, he shares uh, the vision and uh, uh, that, that our, all of our leadership uh, throughout campus um, has and, and and that's just put together a winning culture with good young men and and develop them appropriately. Uh, winning becomes a byproduct of all that. Uh, Coach Holtz didn't, you know, coach a successful team. He coached individuals to be their very best, and we became successful uh, as a byproduct of it. And I think we have that same recipe here. Uh, we got the right leader at hand, and I feel like we got. Um, all the other right ingredients. Uh, it's just going to, again, it's going to be a matter of timing um, and, and hitting all cylinders at once. But um, uh, I, I would not be surprised if we're, you know, sitting here talking about uh, college playoffs uh, as we have been in the past. But, uh, you know, this time I think it's going to be uh, a lot more focused on um, winning versus just getting to the dance. And I think that's where we have been up until now. You know, uh, you know, focused on getting into that playoff versus uh, winning the playoff, and I, I know that's the different mindset that that coach has here versus uh, last two or, two or three years behind. Got one right here. Hi, Derek. I Hi. Uh, I love the interview. Thank um, you. I have two questions for you. First, uh, if you could replay the Boston College game no, after the game of the century, no, no. Uh, any fourth quarter adjustments that you wish Colts, Holtz did? Uh, and then on a more serious note, I love the uh, Notre Dame, what would you fight for series? Um, I would love to hear your ideas on how the Notre Dame football team could be a force for good um, moving forward. All right. So uh, I'll start in reverse order. Um, you know, the, the Notre Dame program is already a force for good. Um, those are some unique individuals, and um, they walk the walk. Uh, you can look at not only their academic uh, commitment, but their service commitment, um, what they stand for, they, the convictions that they have are, are unifying, not dividing. And I think that's always uh, what you want to look for in a, in a championship quality team. Um, team that loves each other. Um, you don't always have to, like a family, you don't have to like everybody, but you got to love everybody. <clears throat> and I think that's truly the case. So uh, we have the right ingredients and, and, and the right people at the helm, um, uh, not only to win, <clears throat> but also represent the university off the field in the way that um, we have for so many years. So I have complete confidence in um, what we will fight for. Um, as far as the Boston College, uh, I, I still got PTSD from that. Um, there's nothing Coach could have done in the fourth quarter because we did everything right in the fourth quarter. He could have started what he did in the fourth quarter. He should have done that in the first quarter. 
Um, and unfortunately, it was a bit of a carryover. I think we got a little, um, I think we got a little cocky after beating Florida State the week before. Uh, that week before, Coach Host told us to leave, uh, the, told the White House, you can leave your gloves in the locker room because we're not going to throw the ball. And we didn't. And we did really well. Lee Becton ran up 100-something yards. Jeff Burris ran up another 100-something yards. Randy Kinder ran up 100 yards. And we won. Um, I think Boston College got the film. <laughs> and uh, that first half, they shut us down. And we didn't decide to throw the ball until we were in a pinch. And by then, it was just a little too late. So um, great lesson to learn uh, is still etched in my memory and uh, tough to get over. Yeah. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Um, what were your guys' favorite professors at Notre Dame, and what were those lessons learned? That oh, my goodness. Second? Easy A. Boutte. No, that's not true. <laughs> it's a, did, did I say that out loud? Yeah. I had it. <laughs> I did not say that out loud, did I? <laughs> that's good. I had him, so we'll, we'll share that. Okay, fair enough. There you go. Science. That's right. Science was one of my favorite subjects. Uh, listen, I, I, professors, I... I you know, professors are, are sometimes like mechanics, right? You, you, you go to get your car serviced, and, um, you know, they're very good at, at that, but, you know, you don't always carry on conversations. And I would say um, that's probably my biggest regret uh, because I treated them as a service mechanic versus a counselor, and I think um, the sooner we can create a relationship with your, with your educators, the more you're going to be able to enjoy the, the educational experience. So um, thank you for reminding me of my academic regrets. Got one here. Hi, Derek. Hey. So I know we're hearing a lot about the changing landscape of college athletics, and you know that's a huge conversation right now. What advice would you have for current student athletes at Notre Dame to make the best of their college experience as they're kind of competing with all these other pressures now? Man, what a tough question. <laughs> um, you know, the, my my first reaction was to say, you know, be open for 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 change and. Uh, because they're, you know, it, the landscape is ever changing. Uh, but in the same breath, I'd say, you know, stick to your principles. Uh, because what I, what I'm also starting to see is the byproduct of, you know, the transfer portal and NIL um, that, um, you know, people aren't willing just to trust themselves and, and trust the process. Um, you, 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 you feel like, you know, everything is under a certain time constraint, and therefore, if you're not getting or accomplishing what you, what you set yourself out to, to, to accomplish in a certain amount of time, then you need to scrap that, and you need to go somewhere else, and you need to change, of course. And so I would, um, I would, I would advise our, uh, young, the, the young uh, student athletes to, to be patient. You know, this is a, this is a marathon playing three-dimensional chess. It's, it's not a sprint, and, and it's certainly not an instant gratification profession. So um, don't let any of these external influences, you know, uh, lure you to that versus staying true to yourself and, and true to your commitments. Did that answer? That, that's, oh. a, that's a great answer. And, and so in closing, I want to say we may have seen the last of Derek Mays on the football field, but we have not seen the last of Derek Mays do the great things that he does. I look forward to seeing what you're going to do next and continuing to be a great Notre Dame man. Well, with folks like you supporting and advocating, um, I have no other choice but to continue to be successful. So thank you, Dolly. And thank you all, Notre Dame family, uh, for always welcoming me back home. <laughs>